Great, thanks, Tony. So, um, and thank you all of you who have who have muted yourself uh, when not speaking. That's that's great that we don't have to do that for you. It it means that you have more control if you want to ask a question and so forth. Um, so I'm hoping today we're going to be joined by um, Judy Levy, who's the membership director um, for the Bay Area uh, chapter in San Francisco, because we want to talk a little bit about um, the pathway from being a guest um, at a chapter meeting to becoming a member. Um, so uh, while we're waiting for Judy to join us, I can say a little bit about um, what happens uh, at the Bay Area chapter. Um, guests usually uh, register as guests um, online before just showing up at an event. So we usually know that they're coming. Um, if they're a guest of a particular member and it's their first time, then they're actually um, uh, allowed to come to our morning program uh, at no charge. So a first time guest who's invited by a member can come at no charge. And um, then uh, we'll have a, um, a name tag for the guest and um, we'll ask them to fill out uh, a form that just gives their contact information if we don't have it already um, from their online registration. And we have also um, a handout for the new guest, um, which is um, just some basics about type, uh, just definitions of the key MBTI words, uh, a brief, brief definition of the eight functions, um, something about temperament. So it's like a maybe, um, I think it's a front and back handout um, that gives people something to, to look at and to um, get definitions of the keywords from. And uh, we will tell first time guests that if they decide they want to um, join um, the chapter um, after they've had the experience of the, of the um, morning meeting, then um, they can do so before they leave. And if they've had to pay because it wasn't their first time to be a guest, then they can apply what they paid um, towards their membership for the year so that there's some uh, incentive for them before they leave for the day to um, actually join the chapter and particularly if they paid something to be a guest because they weren't first time guest or because they were a guest for the first time but they weren't invited by a member. If someone comes for the first time but they're not invited by a member, it's, it's not free. We also, at the beginning of the program, um, in ask um, any new um, guests, um, first time guests to raise their hand so that uh, our members can see who they are and can make a, make a point of talking to them at the breaks and so forth. And um, our membership director makes a point of introducing herself um, to the guest and um, um, trying to introduce them to some other people so that they don't you know, feel um, lonely and alienated at the meeting. Um, if at the end of the meeting, they leave, you know, without um, taking up the offer to join the chapter. Then we have a membership committee, which consists of maybe four people. And someone on the membership committee is assigned to um, call the guest and just say, I'm calling to follow up, see, you know, how was your experience? Did you enjoy it? What'd you think? And try to get in conversation with them. Um, and be welcoming and, and see if they might be interested in joining the chapter or at least coming again to a future uh, um, event. Gives a chance to talk about benefits of membership and to talk about what else is coming up, you know, in our presentations um, for the um, presentation year. Uh, of course, the person is then added also to our mailing list and they will receive our email announcements of um, upcoming events. And um, we'll stay there unless they opt out. Um, so those are some of the things that we do at the Bay Area chapter to try to take someone um, who's a guest and have some kind of a process to convert them to a member. 
um, because uh, membership is really how our business model works. Um, members pay $125 a year. Um, they get a discount if they're an APTI member. Um, and for that, they have access to uh, nine in-person um, Saturday programs plus a couple of webinars. Uh, they, we do charge members a little bit a couple of times a year for certain special things, but pretty much they get the nine morning programs and the two webinars for their $125 membership. Um, they also get for their membership um, something new this year, um, which is um, if they're a practitioner, they, there'll be a, a, a type services page on our website where they'll be able to list themselves as a practitioner and say what their specialization is so that it could lead to um, them receiving some kind of paid business if they're a, you know, MBTI certified practitioner, for example, or a master practitioner, or if they do organizational consulting or whatever it is they do, they can advertise that uh, in a listing format on our website, and that could lead to um, them you know, getting some paid business, and that's a, a free benefit of being a member of the chapter. We're also trying something this year um, to get our members to recruit other members. Uh, if members recruit another member um, who hasn't been a member last year, then um, they get some benefits. For example, um, they can come to a workshop for free where they otherwise would have had to pay uh, for a special workshop. So, um, those are some of the things that we're doing in the Bay Area chapter to um, to try to get welcome guests in as, and get them to become members. We have about 100 uh, members, at least we did last year. We're starting, of course, all over again this fall. So I want to invite anybody who's on the call um, to um, say, you know, what you do in, in your chapter um, to try to to try to turn guests into members. And remember, you'll have to unmute yourself if you were, if you've muted, muted yourself to speak. Adam, it's Pam Reckle in Portland. And I'm so curious about this whole process because I don't think we ever thought about this idea of how do you convert someone. So to actually have a process, we've, we've thought about, okay, we want people to show up to our meetings and then we want to have members, but we forgot about this pathway from going from a, a guest to a member. So you guys, the Bay Area sounds like you've done some nice things to make it easier for members to bring people. And even the idea of someone getting to come to a free workshop, if they're a member, that's a pretty big deal. So that if they um, get someone to become a member, that gets everybody else involved in doing that. So pretty interesting. Um, yeah, I guess that's all I have to say at the moment. Thanks, Pam. You know, um, I think there's a lot of issues about this kind of um, making people comfortable uh, and bringing them in. One thing we're doing this year is in the area of programming, which is we're offering out of our nine um, Saturday programs, three of them we're calling um, type boot camp. And those are programs that are aimed for people who are really new to type um, and where we're advertising that it's, it's, particularly aimed at people who are new to type and that people, it's a program especially where we want people to feel free to ask very basic questions. Um, so there'll be one of those about MBTI and how to convert the MBTI type code, for example, how to break the code and convert it into the functions, um, a little bit about what the functions are, there'll be one about uh, temperament. Um, I forget what the third one is, but um, offering some programs that are at a beginning level and we hope that our advanced type people will still come to those programs because what we're saying is, you, you know, we hope you'll come even though these are at a more basic level because um, it's a way for you to learn how to teach type, to see us, to see our, you know, experts teach it 
this can teach you how to teach it to people who, are, who will be able to talk as well. Um, so that's, that's one thing. Now I'm hearing, um, I'm hearing somebody typing, so somebody maybe is not muted uh, who thinks they are. So I'm hearing key, click, key clicks. Um, one thing I wonder is whether um, uh, any chapters offer type verification or type consultation for new members. I think, um, you know, people come to the chapter, they may not know their type or they may have questions about their type. We have thought about um, offering that um, to, new, um, to new members as another benefit of membership to do a verification of type or to, or to give someone, you know, the MBTI and do a type verification process. I also think that it's worth thinking about, um, you know, that we shouldn't insist that people, you know, put their, their type on their uh, name badge. Maybe they're not comfortable or they're not sure they know their type. And also that we make it easy for people to change their type if they learn that they had it wrong. Because um, I think, you know, we can, do a lot of damage with type, particularly with people that are new to it, if we push them too quick to declare their type or make it too embarrassing to admit that they got it, they might have gotten it wrong or that they're not sure about it. So I would I would even add that that whole issue into the realm of um, what's involved in making a guest feel comfortable and and feel like they want to become part of the chapter. I think another piece of it is the social piece. You know, how do you how do you make sure that the person is getting enough um, social inclusion in the chapter if they've just come once or twice as a guest? How do you make sure that people are talking to them or that they're meeting people? Because surely, you know, people don't come only for the um, professional and the learning. They also often want to, you know, have some social interactions. So how do we ensure that that's, um, that that's happening. Um, so I wonder if anybody else um, would like to talk about how this, um, how you see this in your own chapter. Don't all speak at once. Hi, this is uh, Julian Brown with the Houston APT chapter. And we yeah. sort of in general proceed that way, but I guess not as, as formal. We, we frequently have uh, topics which span both beginning to intermediate, and we encourage questions of new people who show up uh, for every meeting. There, there's always someone who doesn't know something. And, and also it turns out people who've been there for some time years get some detail wrong, so we like to keep it. Um, I guess not non pain, non pain inducing to engage in the, 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 the discussion. Yes. Um, I'm sorry. I'm a little distracted because I see that uh, the membership director of the Bay Area chapter, who was going to join us, is having trouble connecting. So I'm going to try to see if I can send her a. Uh, um, a different um, thing to connect. Let's see. You know, one thing we do uh, um, about not trying not to turn off guests and people who are new to type in the Bay Area chapter is we really try to avoid using um, acronyms and, um, and jargon. Um, even just things like, you know, a lot of times people who, who do type dynamics will say um, NE when they mean extroverted intuition. And we really um, discourage those kinds of abbreviations and jargon in our presenters because um, we uh, feel like, it, you know, it baffles people. Um, I've just sent an invitation to um, Judy Levy, the, the um, membership director 
uh, of the Bay Area chapter for this meeting. So I'm hoping that she will be able to join us. Talking about me. Are you there, Judy? Good. I am. I've tried all these different methods to get into the call, and I, I emailed you to say I was having difficulty. So I'm trying this route, and thank you for your uh, patience. I'm sorry. I was just tried a bunch of different things. I couldn't do it. So. Well, we're glad to have you, and it's just fine. We still have um, still have you know 14 minutes to go on this part, and I've talked a little bit about how I see the the process of you know welcoming guests into the chapter, but I think. People would like to hear it from your point of view as membership director. Well, thank you, and um, uh, hello, everybody. Um, Adam, can you say a little bit about what you've already covered so I don't repeat? Um, well, um, I've said everything really I can think of about, about how um, we welcome guests and try to turn them into uh, members, but I, I think you should go ahead and feel free to repeat. I don't think it'll hurt people to hear it said a different way. Okay, so um, uh, we, do, um, we do a number of different things to try to bring people into the, um, both get them attracted, um, get them into the meeting as well as get them to become members. And um, so to get them into the meeting, we use a number of different uh, approaches. We've, we've explored uh, fa uh, social media such as Facebook and um, Meetup. Um, what else have we done? We've done Facebook Meetup. We've done LinkedIn. some stuff in link LinkedIn, yes, uh, some stuff in LinkedIn. And then, of course, we've done a whole bunch of, you know, announcements, through snail mail, we did postcards, and we've done electronic. We are now only going electronic <clears throat> because we did, weren't getting any real value from doing the postcards, particularly for how much it costs and everything uh, for us to do that. So we're bringing people in, and we are making a point. We assign folks to be greeters, not only when folks first come into the, into the space uh, the day of the meeting, but also during the breaks just to um, help them feel welcome and get connected to other members. And I've been known to just tap people on the, on the shoulder in the morning and say, will you help out with this? And um, it gives them something to do, and it also helps, um, you know, of course, make any folks that are guests um, feel very welcome. Um, so we do a lot of that and um, – also just you know show them around if we have a library out and may have spoken about it you guys may do the same thing uh, so if they appear to be interested in that we'll show them that or certainly show them the goodies point out the goodies that we have the uh, pastries and coffee and juice and so forth so we do that and um, we also make it a habit uh, at the beginning of the meeting to acknowledge folks that are new in the uh, first time uh, guests uh, certainly if they become members during that time. And we usually try to make an announcement either um, in the morning or right before we start up again on the, after the break to talk about the advantages of membership and, and what we're doing. So those are pretty classic things that we've done, and I imagine that you guys would probably do a lot of that stuff as well. The other things that we do, um, we started doing this last year, and it really works really well, is that we actually get, uh, we have folks call people that are new members or showed up as guests and just talk to them, make that one-on-one uh, -on -one connection, find out how they, you know, what the reaction was to the meeting, what they, um, what questions they have. It's not a hard sell in terms of the values of membership, usually allowing the, uh, the person we're speaking to to talk about, you know, find out what their interest is, and then we can say, you know, this is something we offer, or this is the upcoming programs we've done, or these are programs we've done in the past and we have recordings of them um, so that, you know, it can get their interest. Um, the other thing that we are just starting this year uh, is that we are doing um, an incentive, and the jury is still out to see how it's going to go, but we've started an incentive program where we're um, providing uh, discounts or freebies to members that refer others that become members. 
And so, for example, we offer um, webinars, and uh, where if you get uh, somebody who is free to um, – it's not the webinar, forgive me, I'm sorry. It's our afternoon programs that do cost, um, it, we charge, I think it's $15 for members, and Adam, you're going to have to help me out here. 25, 25 I think, for guests. For guests to, to attend the afternoon program. So if I referred Adam to become a member and he becomes a member, then I get one free uh, seminar. Uh, afternoon program. We are doing two of those this coming year, so I can get up to two new members. And for each person that I refer and becomes a new member, uh, we will drop that the referring member's name into a hat, and we will give away um, one free membership for the whole year. Um, we So we're, we're trying that. We'll see how it's going to go. We're going to carry that incentive through uh, the October meeting, and then we will do our um, raffle, or we'll do our little—I guess it's a raffle. We'll do our raffle after that. And um, I haven't heard from very many people that they have referred folks, but we will be um, pushing that very hard in the next couple of weeks. So we may be seeing something happen on that. And then, lastly, the last thing we do, and it is just a, a real advantage of geography and that is that um, CPP is um, right here in the Bay Area. Actually, they're a couple miles from my house, and so they have their certificate classes that go on, and I have now uh, just taken five minutes out of their um, the morning, one morning uh, in the in this, the three-day class, and I just talk about what we offer. I do talk about the other pro, the other chapters as well, and point folks to the APTI website so that they can find out where their local chapter is, and find out what's going on. And I talk about what we offer in the Bay Area. And of course, because of the geography, there is a, a significant percentage of the class is from the Bay Area. So that has done real well for us. And and those are the variety of things that we do in terms of membership. That's Any great, Judy. Thank you. Yeah. Any other questions or comments about that? This is Jane. I have a question. Mm -hmm. um, you mentioned about the member referral and great ideas about the workshop and the drawing for one free membership a year, I, but you weren't sure how to track it. I was wondering and I don't know if you have them fill out a member application, but maybe there's a spot for a referred by X. And Right. And uh, we do need to track it. Right now we're, it's just going to come to me as email. But we have a whole new setup now, and I have not yet seen the capacity for doing that. So we will definitely be looking into that. But thank That's you. That's a great that. – yeah, no, it's a great idea. Thank you for sharing it with us. Um, because Adam was asking what other chapters know do, and I know for Dallas, uh, we also offer a free for the first timers. Um, but I really love the structure of yours, and it really is a continuum and the follow up, you know, and making sure they get to meet other people. It's very helpful. Um, I think another question I have, um, and maybe this is another topic. I don't know. We've got um, six more minutes on this topic, but the type boot camp. Um, that's really interesting, and um, that might be a future topic too. About and I could even envision that as being a potential um, money maker, I guess, for the chapter <laughs> uh, for people that are interested in strengthening. It sounds like you offer it free as a way to learn type better, and um, but that was just a thought I had too. Yeah, as a benefit of membership, absolutely. What were you about to oh. say, Adam? It's not free. I mean, if, if you're a guest and you come to the type boot, type uh, boot camp, unless you're a first time guest invited by a member, you do have to pay. Uh, okay. And it, you know, so it's it's not free. It's one of our regular programs. That's priced just the same as uh, all the programs. Okay. I, I want to return to something about the uh, certificate work workshops. I know that they're given around the country. So for those of you that have classes that are being taught 
by any of the vendors, I would definitely look into it and make a connection um, and see if, if they'd be willing. We've had very good luck with CPP, but I know, Adam, you were asking about one vendor that was in the city, and they were not so welcoming, but they may, they may change their tune. So it's That's just, something that um, APTI is trying to work on as a whole, too. The Chapter De Development Council is trying to uh, work it out with the three vendors that do certification of MBTI so that we can, um, even if they don't allow someone to come and talk, we can at least have a, um, either an email or a brochure or some, some way of letting them know about the chapters. And the other thing that I would add to that is, as, as far as APTI talking to the vendors, is that it really is five minutes max. And I just come in with um, a brochure of our, court, of our um, schedule and I talk about when we do it, what we do, give some examples of what we've done, talk about the other chapters, of course, and APTI, and give my name. And, of course, if I'm making an offer, you can come to our chapter as my guest, mention my name, you're good to go. And um, so it really is five minutes max. And if they're uncomfortable with that, maybe they could, you know, you could have somebody talk to either CPP, I have a contact, or me, perhaps, or whatever. Great. Any other questions uh, before we leave this topic? Well, I guess I just have a comment. This is Pam in Portland. And Judy, what you just said about when you go to the certificate programs, which we also try to do in Portland, but we don't have this, you know, come to the meeting first free. And then by saying, you know, use my name, you know, so you get in free, that's another way to connect them. And so that's a nice little touch there. Yeah, it, it works nicely. We've gotten some really good results. And so uh, we have another one coming up in a couple months, a couple weeks rather. And, um, and so I'm hopeful that it'll, it will really get a lot of um, good response. Okay. Well, thank you, Judy. Um, Pam, I think we're ready to turn the program over to you. Yes. And the, the program, the, what we want to shift to is a conversation about the conference. And for those of you who went to the conference, what we want to hear about is you know, what did you love? What did you notice? What was different about this conference? Anything that stuck out to you. And for those who weren't at the conference, we want this to be a way where you get to learn and hear more and more about it. So kind of a sharing in both ways. And I guess I'll go ahead and start. And I'm very lucky because the Portland and Seattle chapters, we had a phone call with some of the chapter leaders a couple well, I don't know, I think it was last week, um, time is flying here, that Evelyn organized for us. And it was so exciting to hear everyone's different perspective on what they learned at the conference and questions that folks had. So it was a fun conversation for us. So I'm, I'm anticipating that this conversation will also be fun like that and interesting. But I'd say one of the most surprising things that happened for me is that I came away from this conference, and I think this is, was the fifth conference, that I came away with a strong sense that I will not be quite so reliant on the MBTI as my main or sole type uh, assessment that I'm using. And I'm way more interested in broadening my, continuing to broaden my view of type and how I use it. I was so impressed with some of the leaders who seamlessly moved back and forth between type and temperament and interaction styles and cognitive styles, et cetera. And I'd say one of the highlights for me of the conference, and there were a million highlights, um, but one of them was learning more about the type verifier that allows someone to essentially determine their, their Jungian type or essentially their Myers-Briggs type by doing a, a self-assessment and they go through online and with graphics as well as words, the difference between introversion and extroversion is described and you make your choices. And in about 20 minutes, someone could get a really clear picture of what their type is. 
and I played with it a little bit and put in, I said, I'm not so sure about whether I'm judging or perceiving. And then they had me do a comparison and it was a great tool. And so for me as a type practitioner, I will be able to perhaps have teams go through this ahead of time so that when they show up to a team workshop, they come in already prepared. They already know their type. They've got some questions and then we'll focus on application. So that was a real highlight. I thought that was a great tool and I was pleased about that. And that's Rob Toomey's type verifier. He spent his career at, um, uh, where did he in his career? Uh, I'll, I'll remember that in a minute. Anyway, that's a highlight. And I turn it over to others who were at the conference first to talk about what stood out for you. And then for those who weren't at the conference to um, speak up and ask some questions. And we'll use the army methodology if um, no one volunteers and, that, and I'll call on people. Well, I'll, um, I'll volunteer, um, Pam. This is uh, Adam again in San Francisco. Thanks. Um, I um, also was very impressed with Rob Toomey's type verifier, uh, which is a kind of self-guided uh, software program for figuring out your own uh, MBTI type. Um, and I felt that um, it did as good a job explaining the, the, you know, the dichotomies and doing the MBTI kind of verification process as anybody who's ever been come out of a training program, you know, could do. And I think that um, maybe the idea that when people want to figure out their type, they fill out an instrument that they don't totally understand and they just blindly trust it and answer the questions and then it tells them what their type is likely to be is an old fashioned kind of uh, paradigm compared to a process that actually teaches them, you know, what extroverted and introverted means, what thinking and feeling mean and so forth. Um, it seems like making the participant part of the process more fully empowered and educating them through the process is more of a contemporary approach than the trust us, we're the experts, just answer these questions, you know, we'll tell you what we think your type is and then you can tell us if we were right or wrong. So I was really impressed with that too. Um, I took a pre-conference workshop. Um, uh, Cynthia Paris was one of the presenters about how to introduce type uh, to organizations and people that are not that have not seen it before, and I learned a bunch of useful things in that. Um, one of which was we're all aware that people have certain misconceptions about type, and what this workshop suggested is if you know that you're talking to a group of people that are likely to have certain misconceptions about type. Just start out with that and address it head on. Say, you know, some of you are likely to think that um, blah, 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 but actually that's not true. Type is blah, blah, blah. And it seemed to me that that was, um, you know, good advice just to um, start with the misconceptions and address them head on, that that would be a way to capture people's attention because they would feel like you were reading their mind and therefore they would be more likely to pay attention to you. Um, Danielle Poirier did a, a very nice presentation at the conference about opposites. Um, you know, um, one of the key tenets of analytical psychology, of young psychology is the idea of being aware of the opposites and um, holding the tension between two opposites rather than just choosing one and pushing the other into shadow. And so she talked about that in type terms in a way that I thought was very, um, very interesting and, and useful. So those are some of my highlights. I thought that the chapter leaders dinner um, at the uh, conference was a real um, fun experience uh, to hear from all the chapters about what they're doing and to meet the people 
Um, that was a lot of fun for me. Jane, would you be willing to share some of your thoughts about the conference? And then Evelyn, it'd be great if you're willing to share after Jane, if she's able to unmute. Yep. Yeah. Thanks for Thanks bearing for with me. me. <laughs> um, I also was impressed with Rob Toomey's presentation about the type bearer fryer. I don't know why it's echoing. It's not too bad. Okay. Um, and I actually had a client request and I put in my proposal about using the type verifier and they agreed. So I'm going to be using it at the end of this month and I'm going to have them fill out the step two first and then I'll send them the address to do to use the type verifier. And um, so I'll let everybody know how it went, but I'm excited. Will you talk a little bit about the um, meetings we had, the chapter leader room, and what happened there? Sure. sure. We had uh, certain times during the day, either before the conference or if there was a longer break at the end of the day, where I just put out a blast email to the speakers if they would be willing to present a brief 30-minute presentation to the chapter leaders. And if they'd be willing to donate um, a product or a service as a way of thanking the chapter leaders, as well as gaining exposure for being a potential speaker at a chapter. So we had about uh, eight or so volunteers. And overall, they were well attended and well received. It was like we were on the inner circle of hearing some late breaking stuff. So it was uh, enjoyable and hopefully a win-win for everybody. Mm -hmm. Well, let me add a little bit onto that. It also gave me an opportunity as I was thinking about it being as a chapter leader, this idea that I would know more about what the person would be like if they came to present at our chapter. So it was also me hearing new stuff, seeing their products, getting to interact with them in this really more intimate way, and kind of checking them out as a potential presenter. Um, and it had me thinking about things that I'd never imagined. Sue Blair from New Zealand did a terrific job with her card set and showing how she would use the cards in working with an executive team, for example. And she would hold up a card and say, you know, is this likely to be how the accounting department does this? And everyone's nodding their head. And this is how marketing does it. And so she was able to use the graphic pieces differently. And that really stuck with me. Now I just need to get really fluid like she is with that. Anyone else who attended the conference um, would like to speak about it? I can't quite tell everybody who's on the call but would love to hear your input. This is Kathleen. This is Kathleen. I'm Murphy. I'm, Murphy. I'm, living I'm living in Boston, in Boston now, now, but I'm representing New York. And this was my first conference, and I thought it was really great. Um, I did the, fir the one day with uh, Dario Nardi on the brain, and um, it, I learned a lot from that one, even that one day event. And I think it's great to be able to have the certificate programs built around the conference. So I like that the leader din the leaders dinner was really good. This was the first conference I'd been to, and just to get the opportunity to meet people from other chapters and some ideas about how we can start one up here in Boston because it's uh, the one there used to be one here, and there is no longer one. Um, one of the things that I really loved also were the ideas I got from the other participants. People were very willing to share what worked for them in their businesses and um, you know just had to be just some ideas in general on using the, the APTI and I also went to the step three workshop which was great we had had uh, somebody from CAPT do the step three uh, do a step three workshop in New York to just a preliminary of what that's about 
So I thought the conference was great. I, I certainly want to go to the next one. And then, uh, and just the idea of meeting people who do what I do is really re very rewarding for me. Nice. Thanks, Kathleen. It was nice to meet you, too. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. And anyone who didn't go to the conference, what questions do you have? So Sharon Wallace just put a chat question mark that said, how many attended? Tony, do you know that number off the top of your head, how many attended? Um, final number was about 240 and 250. And mm -hmm. also I've seen in the meeting chat, uh, Evelyn having trouble uh, getting unmuted. Uh, I just unmuted your line so you should be able to speak. Um, but uh, be, just be aware that we are getting some background noise from you already. Yeah, thanks. So can you hear me now? Yes. This is Evelyn. <laughs> Thank you, Tony. I've been struggling with this. Um, I'm getting so much echo, though, that I can't speak. Sorry. OK, bummer, Evelyn. Um, OK, so we'll. Evelyn won't be speaking right at the moment, but I can just say from the meeting we had last week with Seattle and Portland talking about this, that she's been to a number of conferences and I actually got to meet her at a conference where we were trying to start up a Seattle chapter and she came to my sign that said anyone from Seattle and that she thought this was a terrific conference also. There's a couple things, other things that I want to share and that is that from a financial perspective, Tony and then Jerry and Jane, Jerry Black and Jane Kesey, who were the conference um, main conference planners, did a absolutely terrific job managing the finances. So actually, we were able to make some money on this conference. And, you know, the hotel rooms were reasonable and they really did a good job negotiating all that. And so it was really nice to see that we could have a financially viable conference. So that was exciting. And they are now um, doing the planning to say, where might we go next? And there was actually a meeting that Jerry Black facilitated to say, okay, what might be a great place? And of course, having good and cheap um, hotel rooms and becomes part of the cornerstone of it. And we were kind of laughing about the weather because there were comments about, oh my gosh, we're going to Miami in summertime. Well, Miami was not as hot as a zillion places in the Midwest even. Um, so the weather was just absolutely perfect and the reasonable hotel and terrific location really worked out well. So they'll be looking for a new site for um, two years from now. So that was pretty great. And one of the other things we're considering for the next time would be to have the chapter leader dinner, so kind of the night before, and then the next morning to probably have a half a day symposium for chapter leaders. So we build a program that's just especially for us. Part of it would be probably focusing on chapter, uh, you know, how to build a chapter, how to do certain things. And then part of it might even be, you know, having some of the type experts come and talk to us. We're not not quite sure yet, but it was clear that there was some hunger for that. And then the chapter leader room, we would definitely consider that, um, continuing that idea. Um, and I was especially surprised about that because a lot of the times that we had to meet in the chapter leader room was at 8 a.m. So it was before any of the programs. Started. And we a couple times we had 10 people at the 8 a.m chapter leader meeting. So that really told me it was really valuable and it really worked. And it was a really nice way to give back to chapter leaders. So it was the ultimate win-win. So I, I want to shift a little. If, is there anything else anyone would like to say or questions about the conference?
Okay, I'm going to move on then and talk a little bit about what we're doing in September. And actually, Adam, I, I need to ask you, what's the main program in September? And then I'm going to talk about the training folks coming. Do you remember? Uh, the, main, the, main the main program was about was managing your chapter's financial health and resources. Oh, yes. So a topic that... Um, is often a challenge for us in chapters and to try to get some best practices on how how we do that and how there may be even some things that are make it easier to manage finances these days. So that will be at least the first half of the hour. And then for the second half, we're going to have the um, board members who they're co-leading the training function for APTI. So Marianne and Amy they are business partners um, doing lots of type-related work in corporations, and they've got backgrounds in human resources and training. And they're going through a process, and they're fairly new to APTI, and so it's terrific to hear them as board members because they've got lots of questions that some of us who have been around for a while aren't thinking to ask anymore. And one of the questions that they're particularly interested in is what is the value of becoming a full member of APTI? And I just, for all of you to know, at the moment we know as a board that our value proposition for full APTI members is very weak. It's not really clear to folks, especially in a non-conference year. I mean, my own belief is that this idea to, as Kathleen Murphy was saying, you know, you get to really be with people of like minds and like interests and the conversations and connections have always been fabulous from my perspective with that. That said, I'd like to have a little more of a real value for the membership. And so in this coming year, that's a part of what the board is focusing on. One of the things that one of the opportunities there is to really beef up the training function. So at the moment, it's not clear what's the difference between training that APTI does, that CPP does, that individual practitioners do. There's, some, there's not a clear differentiation at the moment. So Amy and Marianne are considering um, what could be a track of courses that someone could see that they're making progress in it. It might even have a certification. And they're thinking about it for different um, segments of the market, so to speak. And they actually went out and interviewed 50 HR directors and vice presidents about what would they benefit from? What would they like? So I think in September, you'll hear about a proposal that they've got for a track, and I don't remember how many courses, five to seven courses, something like that, but that would be four HR folks, all from a type-related um, angle. So it might be, um, how do you uh, develop people based on type? How do you interview? How do you um, even do performance counseling. I don't remember what their topics were, but they would be the kinds of topics that an HR person would want to pay attention to. They would be focusing on HR directors and above. And again, this could lead to an HR type certification. So how to apply a type lens to the different basic pieces of the HR or employee life cycle. And I was pretty excited about that because that would be, again, a value proposition so that in order to attend the training classes and get the certification, it would be cheaper for people who are members. And, you know, it just simply costs more money for someone who is a non-member. And I think their idea would be to get something like that up and running, and then they'd work on a different uh, track for, I don't know, I don't know who would be next, but it might be coaches or it might be spiritual directors or it might be, I don't know who but I appreciated the way that they're approaching this. And they're also very interested, and I know they talked with some of you at the conference. I don't know if they talked with any of you. They talked with some chapter leaders. I don't know if specifically it's anyone on the call, but asking about this idea of the value proposition, and they were really pleased to get the candid responses. So um, 
that was a great connection and they came to the chapter leader dinner as part of the board so that was pretty terrific so i'm saying all this as enticement for you to make sure you're back in september and that you come with lots of questions and thoughts and they really want to hear you know your thoughts about whether you think this is a good idea or not so much so that's all that we've got for today unless anyone else has got I'll, I'll have a we'll have a moment of silence to see if anyone else has got a question a comment and other than that we'll we'll close for today so any other questions or comments i sure want to thank judy levy and adam fry for talking with us about the Bay Area and your transition from guest to member. I love some of those ideas. Um, so that's very valuable and I'm glad we've got this program recorded. So thanks all. We will um, see you or hear you or um, be connected again in September. So enjoy the rest of your August and summer and thanks for participating in this meeting. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.